So we're talking with Bill Craig, author of God, Time, and Eternity. Bill, can anyone reasonably claim that they know for certain that the God of the Bible does not exist? Well, I don't think that you can make that claim justifiably, though I think that if you could show, for example, that there's a logical contradiction in the biblical concept of God, that would be a proof that God does not exist. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if you could show that God had contradictory attributes so that he was like a round triangle or a married bachelor, then God could not exist because a logical contradiction cannot be true. So if somebody could show that the concept of God is logically incoherent, um, then I think that would be a successful disproof of God. The God that's suspected in this book certainly, 100%, does not exist. I know it and you can know it as well because it's a different type of a question. It's a question of, of certainty. For example, if I said, do you believe in the existence of a married bachelor? What would you say? You would say, well, not only does a married bachelor not exist, it cannot exist by definition or a square circle. If you tell me that the God of the Bible is a married bachelor, I will say he does not exist. And that's how we can know that there are mutually incompatible pro properties and characteristics of the God that's in this book that rule out the possibility of his existence. For example, in Malachi 3.6, God said, I am the Lord, I change not. And yet all through the Bible we see God changing his mind. In Ezekiel 32.14, the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. And by the way, I'm giving one or two examples, but there are multiple examples throughout the Bible which I detail in my book if you want to go into greater depth. The God of the Bible does not change, and the God of the Bible does change. He does not exist. It's like a married bachelor. In Exodus 25, God said, I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. The God of the Bible punishes people for their parents' sin. However, in Ezekiel 18.20, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. In Deuteronomy 24.16, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. The God of the Bible punishes children for their parents' sin. The God of the Bible does not punish children for their parents' sin. He does not exist. In Psalm 145.9, the Lord is good to all. Deuteronomy 32, he's a God of truth and without iniquity. However, and you find a lot of God is good verses in the Bible. Isaiah 45.7, God said, I make peace and create evil. Bara ra in the Hebrew. I, the Lord, do all these things. Lamentations 3. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. Jeremiah 18. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you. Ezekiel 20, 25. I gave them statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. The God of the Bible is good. The God of the Bible is not good. He does not exist. Does God tempt people? James 1.13 said, Let no man say, I am tempted of God. God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. However, Genesis 22.1, It came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. God does not tempt people. God does tempt people. He does not exist. In Exodus 20.13, in the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not kill. In Leviticus 24, 17, a different phrasing of it with a different Hebrew word. He that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. However, we find in Exodus 32, Thus saith the Lord of God, Put every man his sword by his side. Slay every man his brother, his companion and neighbor. First Samuel 6, The people lamented because the Lord had smitten many of the people with a great slaughter. The Bible is filled with examples of the biblical God committing, commanding, and condoning killing. The God of the Bible says, don't kill. The God of the Bible says, kill. He does not exist. Should we own slaves? Leviticus 25 says yes. The Bible is a pro-slavery book of the children of the strangers that sojourn among you. 
you shall buy them and they shall be your possession you shall, they shall be your bondmen forever you find all sorts of pro-slavery books in the Bible you can sell your sons, sons and daughters into the hand of the children and so on even Jesus said that some slaves you ought not to beat as hard as other slaves he was that compassionate and slaves obey in all things your masters it says in Colossians however Isaiah said undo the heavy burdens let the oppressed go free break every yoke Neither be called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. The God of the Bible is pro-slavery. The God of the Bible is anti-slavery. He does not exist. In Romans 15.33, we find out that he is called the God of peace. Yet in Exodus 15.3, the Lord is a man of war. In the Old Testament, he's a war god. And you can see his actions. He's a hateful, vicious, tyrannical, brutal discriminatory war God. The God of the Bible is a God of peace. The God of the Bible is a God of war. He does not exist. What about his son? Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. And when he was born, on earth peace, good will toward men. However, Jesus himself said, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. He said to his disciples, If you don't have a sword, sell your garment and buy one. The God of the Bible is peaceful. The God of the Bible is not peaceful. He does not exist. Jesus said, though I bear record of myself, my record is true. Yet a few verses earlier he said, if I bear record of myself, my record is not true. He contradicted himself. The God of the Bible's witness is true. The God of the Bible's witness is not true. He's a merry bastard. He does not exist. John 1.18 says, no man has seen God at any time. Can God be seen? No. Exodus 33, Thou canst not see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And on and on. First John in the New Testament, No man hath seen God at any time. However, in Genesis 32, For I have seen God face to face. Exodus 33, 11, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaks unto his friend. The God of the Bible cannot be seen. The God of the Bible can be seen. He does not exist. Is he powerful? Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh, in Jeremiah 32. Is there anything too hard for me? Jesus said, with God all things are possible. And yet, in Judges 1.19, read this. The Lord was with Judah. He drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, but he could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley. Why? Because they had chariots of iron. God is all-powerful. God cannot even fight chariots of iron. God does not exist. Does God live in light or does God live in darkness? 1 Timothy 6, the King of kings, Lord of lords, dwelling in the light which no man can approach. James 1.17, he's the father of lights. And on and on we see God is light. There's no darkness in him at all. However, in 1 Kings 8, 1 Kings 8, then spake Solomon. The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. 1 Samuel 22, he made darkness, pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the sky. Psalm 18:11, he made darkness his secret place. So, God lives in light, God lives in darkness. Does he accept human sacrifice? In some verses, yes. In some verses, no. Remember the thing about when Abraham, he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. By the way, Abraham should have said, no way, I'm better than you, I'm not going to kill my son. Uh, look, what, look what God said after he, he stopped it. He said, lay not thine hand upon the land, lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for I know now, I now know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld thy son. I know now. I thought God knew everything. The Bible says God knows the future, but here he is saying, I, don't, I didn't even know. The Bible even says God searches and understands all the imaginations of the heart. The God of the Bible knows the future. The God of the Bible does not know the future. By the way, if the God of the Bible knows the future, that means he knows all of his own future actions, doesn't it? He knows what he's going to do tomorrow at 12 noon, which means he can't change what he's going to do tomorrow at 12 noon. He's not, he's not omnipotent. If he does change what he's going to do, then he uh, was not omniscient. In order to have free will and be a person with free will, you have to have options that are open to you that you can make a decision. If your decisions are predetermined in advance, you are not a free person. If the God of the Bible is defined as a free personal being who knows the future, then the God of the Bible does not 
exist. Since we have no good reason to believe in a God in general, and since the God of the Bible is defined in mutually incompatible terms, we can know as a fact that the God of the Bible does not exist. Maybe the flying spaghetti monster exists, that might be a different debate, but the God of the Bible we know with certainty does not exist.